In our most recent video, we introduced the notion of a ring, an algebraic structure that, uh, that has two operations rather than just the one that we were considering whenever we were studying groups. Rings come in several flavors that are important to algebraists, and we'd like to discuss several of those today. Let's go to the whiteboard. So just as a reminder, a ring is an algebra with operations that we represent as addition and multiplication that uh, have the property that the set R together with the additive operation is an abelian group and the set together with the multiplicative operation is an associative algebra. And that the two operations interact with one another through the distributive property. So in addition to that definition, if, um, if the multiplicative structure, the, the set R together with multiplication is abelian, recall it doesn't have to be, commutativity was not one of the requirements for the multiplicative operation in a ring. But if we do happen to have it, then we use the term commutative ring uh, for that structure. Of course, the commutativity there must refer to commutativity of multiplication because every ring is a commutative structure along with the additive operation. If uh, in addition to the properties of a ring, we happen to have that, uh, that our multiplicative structure has the identity property as well, well, then we call that identity element a unity element to distinguish it from the additive identity. And we refer to the structure as a ring with unity. If in addition to the properties of a ring, we have that the non-zero elements form an abelian group under multiplication. Well, we discussed this in our last video. Uh, we referred to that structure as a field. It's a very, very rich structure, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a bit. So a field would be uh, a set together with an addition and a multiplication such that uh, the set together with addition is an abelian group and the non-zero elements together with multiplication is an abelian group. If in addition to the properties of a ring, we have that uh, the ring is a commutative ring and a ring with unity, both of those, so it satisfies both of the properties we discussed up here. And in addition has the cancellation property. We refer to that structure as an integral domain. And uh, that is referring to the fact that uh, the integers are a prime example of an algebra that satisfies all of these properties. Um, multiplication is abelian. We have a unity element, the number one, and the cancellation property holds in the integers. And so an integral domain is essentially a ring that behaves similarly to the integers. If in addition to the properties of a ring, we have that the ring is a commutative ring with unity and well, instead of the cancellation property, we're gonna write no zero divisors, well, we, all, we call that an integral domain as well. Why the two definitions? Well, in the last video, you may recall that in a ring, having the cancellation property is equivalent to having no zero divisors. So these are really describing, these are really describing exactly the same thing. But uh, sometimes it's more convenient to think of it this way, and sometimes it's more convenient to think of it the other. Okay. So I uh, just want to mention that uh, fields, remember, they are rings for which 
the set together with the additive structure is an abelian group and the non-zero elements together with the multiplicative operation is an abelian group. That gives us a lot to work with, right? They satisfy all of our favorite properties for, for both of, of the operations. And so for that reason, many, many nice results can be proven about fields that wouldn't hold in structures that were less rich. So we really like to live in fields. So much, so much can be proven there. We're familiar with that setting. It's the setting that we're in whenever we uh, study the real numbers. It's the setting we're in whenever we study uh, the rational numbers. These are, these are examples of fields. Um, integral domains, on the other hand, are not fields. And, and just consider the example I just gave you, the, the integers. Um, the integers are not a field because, well, fields require, since the multiplicative structure uh, is an abelian group on the, uh, the non-zero elements, that means that uh, every element has an inverse, a multiplicative inverse. But in the integers, the only elements with multiplicative inverses are one and negative one, right? For example, two does not have a multiplicative inverse. If, if it did, the multiplicative inverse would be one half, and that element is not a member of the integers, right? But it turns out that they're almost, almost as nice as fields. Integral domains do satisfy many, many of the properties that, that fields do. And just like we can build the rational numbers from the integers by taking quotients of them, right? So in, in essence, we're, we're taking an integral domain, the integers, and we can, we can build a field that contains the integers from, from quotients of integers. It turns out that we can do this with, with any integral domain. We're, we're not going to go into this and prove it, but, but I just wanted to, to mention this. If we have any integral domain, uh, we can build a field that contains that integral domain from quotients of, of the elements. And whenever I say can, that the new field contains the, the integral domain, that's, that's not exactly true, but it contains an isomorphic copy of the integral domain, which for all intents and purposes, for an algebraist anyway, that's the same thing. Um, so integral domains are, are very close to, to uh, having properties that are as nice as, as fields. Now, I think it's clear that every field is an integral domain. And whenever I say clear, it, it's clear after we review again what, what the properties are for each of those. Let me, let me put this back up again. So I'm, I'm claiming every field is an integral domain. So what do we need to be an integral domain? So it has to be a commutative ring. Well, fields are commutative rings. Uh, with unity, well, fields do have a unity element. And the cancellation property. Well, there's nothing in the definition of a field about the cancellation property. But if we can show that fields do have the cancellation property, then that, that would be all we would really need, right? So Whenever I say it's clear that a field is an integral domain, what I'm really saying is it's clear that a field has the cancellation property. Why is that? Well, I mean, if you take, if you take a non-zero element from, uh, from a field, um, and you take that non-zero element times some b, and you take that non-zero element times some c, and if those two are equal, then, well, what can you do? Right, I wanna show that b is equal to c, but since I'm in a field, I can multiply both the left and the right-hand sides on the, uh, multiply on the left by a inverse, right? I'm in a field, every non-zero element has an inverse, so a being non-zero has an inverse, and whenever I do that, what I have, is that, uh, is that B equals C, which is exactly what I needed. So it's pretty clear that every field is an integral 
domain. But uh, as we pointed out with the integers, not every integral domain is a field. However, it turns out that, uh, that if we just consider finite integral domains, those are fields. And that's a very interesting theorem, maybe a little bit surprising even, but uh, let's, let's go through a quick proof as to why that might be the case. So we're gonna start with a finite integral domain and uh, eventually we're gonna show it's a field. So let's see, just reminding us what that means. So that means that uh, with the multiplicative, I'm sorry, with the additive operation, we have an abelian group with the, uh, that's a D, with the multiplicative operation, um, we have both the commutative and identity properties, right? And, uh, and we also have that D together with multiplication has the, has the cancellation property, right? Those are all coming, those are all properties of, uh, of being an integral domain. So what we need to show, let's see, what's left? Uh, we want to show that this is a field. So the only thing left for being a field, let's see, we need for the multiplicative operation to give us an abelian group on R star. So what we need to show is that uh, the only things we don't have so far, well, the only one thing we don't have so far is the inverse property, right? That was not, uh, that was not part of the definition of an integral domain. So we need to show that uh, the set of non-zero elements together with the multiplicative operation has the inverse property. Okay, well, let's do that. So I'm gonna do that by, let's see. So we're assuming that uh, D is finite. So I can, I can list its non-zero elements out, right? D also has a zero element, has the uh, additive identity, but we're not interested in that one right now. We're, we're trying to show that the non-zero elements have the inverse property. So let's list them out. We'll say we have n of them. And I need to show that every one of these non-zero elements um, has an inverse. So let's pick one of them. So call it a sub i. i something between one and n. So pick some a sub i out of this set and multiply it by each of the members of that set. So AI times A1, AI times A2, all the way through AI times AN, right? So obviously, since, uh, since D star together with the multiplicative operation is an algebra, each of these has to be something else in D star. So I have, I, this is a subset of D star. But it turns out that every one of these is a different element of D star. He, here's why, right? If I, if I had AI times some AJ, maybe AI times A2, I don't know, equal AI times AK, I don't know, maybe that's AI times A3, right? If those two were the same, then uh, what's true? Well, I'm assuming that D has the cancellation property with respect to multiplication. And so since it has the multiplication property, AJ and AK have to be the same. So the only way that two of these could have been the same is if I picked on the same element that I was multiplying by each time. So I couldn't have picked A2 and A3 as, 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 as these. I would have had to have picked, say, AI times A2 and AI times A2, right? So turns out that every one of these are different. So there are N elements of D star in there. Well, that's all the elements of D star. D star only had N elements. And so since the set contains n different elements of D star, this set is D star. And recall that uh, an integral domain has a unity element. So one of these non-zero elements is the unity element, 
Well, that means that AI times AJ has to be one for some AJ. Well, that's exactly what it means to say that AJ is the inverse of AI. And so a AI does in fact have, have a multiplicative inverse, right? So again, we picked an arbitrary non-zero element out of D and we showed that that element has an inverse. That was the only property we were missing was the inverse property. And now we have that D star together with multiplication has that inverse property. That shows us that, uh, that D star together with multiplication is an abelian group. And so that gives us that, uh, that D together with addition and multiplication is a field. And that's all I have for you in this video today. It's a shorter one. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and next time we'll, uh, we'll continue our investigation of rings. Specifically, we'll be looking at, at subgroups and various types of subgroups. Until then, stay well, stay safe. I'll see you then.